So I'm, I'm Cole Turner. Um, as, as Mark mentioned, I'm the head of school of School of Engineering. However, what he didn't mention is I have maths degrees as well, so you can even get to be head of school of School of Engineering with maths degrees. So you don't have to worry about that. And I'm going to try to talk to you about um, some of the results in mathematics which are very unintuitive, which is some of the things that Mark is looking at as well. Um, Mark already mentioned uh, some of the reasons why maths is very important and why you should care about it. Um, it's probably quite nicely demonstrated by this cartoon. You know, if you're pretty much whatever you do, you need at some stage to be able to do the mathematics that are involved in it. So anything that's in the sciences or the social sciences, you're going to need maths to understand it. And indeed, this one is sort of making the point that even to understand physics, you need a lot of maths. Um, so, this is a nice little book that uh, you used to be able to buy. Sadly, I suspect it's not on sale any longer, but it's called How to Bluff Your Way in Maths, and it costs two quid. It's great. It tells you all the random answers just to bluff out to your teacher if you can't work out what the answer is. So, you know, if you're doing a degree, you just say zero, one, or infinity, and you're probably right. Um, so, uh, and even if you're wrong, then your math teacher has to struggle going, mm, well, why did you get that answer? Uh, so, there's lots of nice techniques in this. But one of the things that the, the author sets out at the very beginning is that maths consists of three things, and some of you have already have spotted this. It consists of proving the absolutely obvious, we've done a bit of that, proving the not so obvious, and also proving the absolutely obviously untrue. And I'm going to try to look at a few of these as we go through. No way. Let's get on to the really interesting stuff, the obviously untrue, I promised you. Let's talk about this one. Right, so here's a not very pic good picture of the Earth. And imagine you have a rope which goes all the way around the equator of the Earth for the sake of argument, okay, just to make life easy. So you've got a long, long rope. Now you decide it's going to get dirty because it's on the surface of the Earth. So you're going to put one meter long sticks into the Earth all the way around and keep that rope a meter away from the surface the whole way around the Earth. How much extra rope do you need? And I'm obviously looking for you to guess. What do you reckon? Give a wild shot in the dark, folks. What's the worst that could happen? 3,000. 3,000 meters. Good. Thank you. Thank you, that man. Any advance in 3,000? Or any reduction in 3,000? 3,001. 3,001. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you to the man at the back. Anything else? So 3,000. That's, that's, that's as good as we're going to get. Actually, it's... Sorry? 15,000. 15,000. Oh, we're getting to the ribbon now. Anything else? 18,000. 18,000. Wow, okay. So it's. Sorry? So actually, it turns out to be a lot less than that. Much, much less. So let's see if we can work it out. Now, I was a bit cheeky and I didn't tell you the radius of the Earth. And that's usually a clue that you're being swindled, okay? So. Let's just do very basic mathematics using pi, thank you sir, okay, and we'll assume that the earth, the earth is spherical, which it isn't, um, but it's pretty spherical, and if you work out the circumference of the radius, it's just going to be 2 pi times the radius of the earth, yes? So now what you want to do is make your new circumference, you're going to add to the entire radius of the earth, you're going to add that extra meter all the way around, yes? So now you've got 2 pi multiplied by this new radius. Well, you multiply your 2 pi on that, and you get what was the original rope length, and you've got an extra 2 pi. So you only need an extra 6 and a bit meters to go that extra distance. That's a very unintuitive result. And one of the reasons it's unintuitive is because you're bewildered by the size of the Earth. But actually, that's got nothing to do with it. This kind of relationship is what we call linear, it's a straight line relationship. If you add 1, it's not going to have a very big impact. If we'd have asked you to work out areas, that would have had something different happen. But this shows you just how some things can be very unintuitive. It wouldn't matter if you were talking about putting thread around the edge of a 10p piece, or putting this the whole way around the earth. It's the same. Now, speaking of 10p pieces, there's an old problem. And the problem used to be, or this old story, that two people played a game of chess and that whoever won had to get a certain amount of grains of rice on the board in a certain way. I'm guessing you don't care about rice. So I'm going to try to motivate you with 10p pieces. So, supposing that the person that won this game of chess, we have <coughs> our, our entire chess board. So obviously, as you know, a chess board is just an 8x8 grid. 
So you've got 64 squares. And you put a single 10p piece on that first square. You put two on the next. You put four on the next. You put eight on the next. And you double every single square the entire way, all the way down through 64 squares. <coughs> right. Question. How tall is that pile of 10p is going to be? And yes, it's another guess. Come on, folks. What do you reckon? Well, now you're trying to work it out. I'm asking you to guess. What's your, what's your intuition? Right, great. It's gonna, yeah, that's, that's pretty close, but, but how tall is that? What do you reckon? Is it as tall as a house? Is it as tall as this table? Is it as tall as a bus? Is it as Empire State? Empire State, right, okay, good. We've got, a, we've, got, we've got an offer at a table. It's the Empire State Building. Higher or lower? Lower. Lower, lower. right, okay. So where then? Bus. <laughs> bus, right? Any other? Okay. Well, here, let's work it out. So here's the first row, right? We're just putting one, one, then two, then four, then eight, all the way to 128. And as you have correctly said, some of you, these are just the powers of two. Starting at two to the zero, and getting two to the seven. And you keep doing that. So you're quite right. Actually, the pile's actually two to the 63, because you start off at two to the zero. So you've got two to the 63 points. Well, that's great. You can work that out. But what does that mean? Well, if you take two to the 63, it's that much. <coughs> It's pretty big. And uh, a 10 piece piece is this size. Yes, I was sad enough to go and get this from a Royal Mint website, so that's really correct. And if you multiply that out, that's how tall this is in meters. All right, so I think you might be guessing this is a bit bigger than a bus. Okay? But how big is that number? Because even that seems quite difficult to grasp. Well, the Empire State Building was a good guess, but actually by the 19th square, you're already taller than the Empire State Building. So it's way taller than that. <laughs> by the 29th square, it's further than the moon, which in case you've noticed is quite far. <laughs> by the 48th square, you're now reaching the sun, which is 93 million miles in old money. By the 63rd square, you are a light year high. So that means by the 64th, by the way, you're about two light years. So you're about halfway to the nearest star that isn't the sun. That's a bit bigger than a bus. Mathematics isn't actually about numbers. It's easy for you to be forgiven for thinking it's about numbers, because that's the way you're taught about it at first. But actually, you're being asked to look at numbers and identify the patterns that occur in numbers and the way you operate with them. But those patterns are found in everything else. The same patterns you find in numbers uh, and certain things can be found in the way crystals work in chemistry. You can see the same patterns in the way music works in terms of how the frequency of string makes, which is also physics. You see these patterns even in art and language and all the other areas you might not think of as being have any link to mathematics. As Mark has already suggested, if you wanted to do take forward science or engineering, mathematics is essential. It's the way to understand the world. It allows you, when you understand these things, not to be as bamboozled as you otherwise would. It allows you not to be easily swindled. So those are some various thoughts for you to think about uh, for um, taking forward mathematics. And I would again endorse what Mark said. Study maths, because people will snap you up. Whether they want you for computer programming, it's about algorithms, it's about mathematics, they will snap you up. If they are engineering or technology, again, mathematics is absolutely throughout it. They will snap you up. It's in every single area of modern endeavor. So it's a subject you should always try to do. If you understand the maths, you can do the physics. You can't necessarily do it the other way around. So it's important. Um, so I've already, I've already pointed out that your intuition is something you need to be very careful about. You need to sometimes look at it. Because some ideas you think are really obvious turn out not to be true. And some things that seem to be completely outrageous do turn out to be true. So maths can help you sort this sort of stuff out, but it's, it's difficult. This cartoon is purely there for the benefit of the maths teachers who probably need something to wind down after a long day. Um, thank you very much for your attention. I'm going to shut up now. Thanks very much. <laughs>